Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper, along with his wife Laureen, arrived in Israel this week to embark on what would become a journey of firsts. Not only was this Harper's first visit to the region, but it marked the first time a serving Canadian Prime Minister stepped foot on Israeli soil in 14 years. And Harper did not come alone. The Canadian Prime Minister was accompanied by an exceptionally large 208-member delegation made up of members of parliament, rabbis, Christian ministry leaders, and businessmen. Uh, I have to say, Stephen, that you are a great friend of Israel and the Jewish people. I'm not just saying that. I mean it deeply from the bottom of my heart, and I speak for all the people of Israel. This world is um, often cynical and hypocritic, and you have shown great moral leadership. The warmth and mutual admiration between the two nations and the two world leaders became immediately apparent. How significant is this trip of the Prime Minister of Canada coming here to Israel today? Historic. It's historic. It's uh, once in a lifetime, well, at least for Canada, we, it's uh, a long time. It's been a decade or more since we've had a Prime Minister here, but a delegation of this magnitude to this country. Uh, the atmosphere on the plane was celebratory. Well, I can tell you as Mayor of Jerusalem, having your best friend come over, having the, uh, the, the Prime Minister of practically one of the most best friends, most committed, loyal people to the Jewish people, to the State of Israel, is a huge honor. Harper then made history by becoming the first foreign dignitary in the history of Israel to be given the key to the Knesset. Then, moments later, another first. Stepping up to address the Israeli Knesset, Harper became the first Canadian Prime Minister to be given such an honor. His historic speech was unabashedly marked by moral clarity and staunch support for the sole democracy in the region. Canada supports Israel fundamentally because it is right to do so. This This, by the way, is a very Canadian trait, to do something for no reason other than it is right, <laughs> even when no immediate reward for or threat to ourselves is evident. But our support does mean at least three things. First, Canada finds it deplorable that some in the international community still question the legitimacy of the existence of the State of Israel. Second, Canada believes that Israel should be able to exercise its full rights as a UN member state and to enjoy the full measure of its sovereignty. Third, we refuse to single out Israel for criticism on the international stage. Most disgracefully of all, some openly call Israel an apartheid state. Now, the climax of Harper's that. address found in his closing comments left many of the Canadian Jewish members of his right delegation now, awestruck. And therefore, through fire and water, Canada will stand with you. Friends, you've been... Uh, I don't remember ever in my lifetime being at an event where I was so overwhelmed as I was when I heard the Prime Minister. Uh, when you consider all of our history, uh, our, my grandparents, great-grandparents, all victims of the Holocaust, and we are in Knesset, which is the hall of uh, Jewish dialogue, you know, for Israel, and to have a Canadian Prime Minister, the Canadian Prime Minister coming and saying through fire and water, uh, we are with you, and he means it because he has proven it already. Uh, it's just so overwhelming. I don't think there are words to describe it. Although streets were adorned with Canadian flags and there was clear evidence of a Canadian presence in Jerusalem. Not all Israelis are aware of the fact that there's a pro-Israel world leader in town, but for those who heard Stephen Harper's Knesset speech, there is nothing but appreciation. I saw in the news that the Canadian Prime Minister was here and uh, I heard what he said and uh, they spoke about it in the newspaper a lot. It was heartwarming. It makes me feel really good that there is a country that supports us and stands with us.